Are you wearing jorts right now? No, they're oh jeans. Okay, I just saw jeans. your your knees, and no, I was please. like, okay. No, the vibes over here, grim. <laughs> I mean, better because I'm laying down. It's okay. Um, I had you're just uh, like giving me the finger for having a bad day. I was like, okay. I had a rogue like disposable razor in my bag. Why? It it was a three pack, and one of them must have fallen out. Mm. And my bag is like kind of a chaotic mess. There's shit everywhere. But I was looking for my wallet this morning to like scan into my office, and I just sliced my finger right open and i'm like i have to scan in and so i'm literally just like holding my finger and i'm just like it's like running down my arm and i'm like i have to get upstairs and get a band-aid on this immediately okay so for you bad day for the two girls yeah uh, we're we're uh doing the best that we can Yeah, honestly, I just feel like it's brave of me to be wearing jeans. Like, that's where I'm at, where I'm like, you know what? I'm doing what I can, and that's here being here. Um, if you're listening to this uh, and not watching on YouTube, I am laying on the couch, like, fully fully horizontal. She is. I can't being, confirm. Recording this podcast because I have horrendous cramps. And that horrendous. Is a, that's just that's just life as two girls, baby. Oh, it's like it's. I feel like I could throw up. I feel really faint, and I also it's radiating to my back, mm-hmm. which you know happens to me. So like my mm-hmm. back is just a knot. Like the whole my whole lower back. I am in so much pain. However, nevertheless, she persisted, and she's here. And Kate and I have been trying to record this podcast all week for several days now um and it's just one thing after another for us um so we are finally we're doing yeah, it. yeah i got over my eye saga and immediately got my period so it's just like it's not for me this week is just <laughs> it's, the week is not for me um and that's okay not every week <laughs> every week for me. can't be a good week you know Maybe it's not your day, your week, your month, or even your year. <laughs> that's me. Maybe it's not my week, but it's going to be my year. I think we'll that's see. what all time low said. Well, I'm <laughs> quoting the Friends theme song. Oh. But either way, I hope it's my year because the week has not been it for me. But we're here. And we're that's here. all that matters. We're here. We're ready to have fun. We're ready to talk about Formula One. We we're sure ready. are. Honestly, <laughs> this is pretty lit. Like, I think we should lay down more <laughs> when we record these podcasts. Like, I love to lay. Like, we, the girls, the two girls do. Well, really when we have lay. when we have our um, studio with our mega bed, <laughs> then what? <laughs> then what? It's literally, it's where it's going to be you and me, big comfy couch. You remember that show? Yeah. No, of <laughs> course. Please. Of course I remember that show. That's going to be us. Of course I remember that show. I can't wait. It's That was one with um the clown girl. Mm-hmm. So obviously the intro that we film or record in a couple weeks, we have to lay down and do the clock <laughs> with our legs. Because <laughs> we are so nimble and I'm so really flexible. flexible. Actually, <laughs> um, I could be in Cirque du Soleil. (laughs) And you famously always said that. (laughs) Always. (laughs) Anyways. Welcome back to another episode of TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. We're your hosts. I'm Nicole. My name's Kate. This is our show show. where we can do whatever we want, including laying down. (laughs) Having a cut finger. Having a little lay is always good for the soul. I mean, always. If you are having a bad day, I highly recommend just lay down. It's anti-grind culture, baby. We are fighting against the system here. Okay? We are laying down. We're laying (laughs) constantly. I'm always laying down. It used to be sitting. I used to love to sit. That's not even cutting it anymore. I have to be Sitting was so... 2023. 2024 is the year of the lay. We're laying down in 2024. And we're We're laying laying down down the the law. law. Nice. (laughs) 
Exactly. 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 It's that it's literally <laughs> that thing I post on the story. It's two delusional besties just saying exactly that's what this podcast. <laughs> that's, that's, um, us. that's us. And that's what you're in for today, ladies and gents. Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly that. I feel like we need to be on what is that podcast network that's like that does um my favorite murders on it because they're always like that's exactly right and that's the intro to it like i honestly i think the network might be exactly right and i'm like that should be us we should be on there because that's exactly right <laughs> no shade I'm to the wire to say it. i'm already prepared to say it <laughs> um anyways let's talk let's talk about f1 let's do it let's, let's just it dive in head first let's, yeah lights out and away we go formula one <laughs> As they say, Japan. As, Japan. Won't lie, I didn't watch the race still. I know I said I was gonna, but I didn't. You're a fake fan. I know. Okay, well, to be fair, to be fair, I did have every intention on Sunday of waking <laughs> mm-hmm. up and catching a rewatch, mm-hmm. catching a rewatch of the race. Um, however, I did have a bulbous eye. That she couldn't to- see. She was blind in one I eye. I was literally blind. So I did have to go to urgent care to get that uh, figured out. And I was in urgent care for like the entire day. Um, and by the time I got home, I was like, I simply can't. I simply can't do anything. You know um, what? If I then- had asked you, if I had asked you Sunday morning with you not knowing anything about the race <laughs> to pick the grid. I'm sure you could have picked it exactly I mean, I how it ended yeah. up. So yeah. I, at the end I of the day. the results, I wasn't mad that I missed it. Yeah. To be honest. Like I caught, I mean, I caught the highlights, the social media highlights, and I felt like I, that was enough for me. Um, Listen, I knew I w- was going through our like tagged stories and then people were like, oh, like red flag. And I didn't watch it live. One. I watched, <laughs> I watched it in, I watched the 30 minute recap. Yeah, Racing and 30 is probably one of the best inventions that's ever. Yeah, thank you, invented. F1 TV. Big, big shouts to F1 TV big for shouts out <laughs> for <laughs> Racing 30 and the eight minutes as well. But I was like, oh shit, I wonder when the red flag happens. Okay, 30 seconds into the Racing 30, red flag. And guess who was involved? Could, if you had given me, if you had given me a guess, you know who I would have said. I would have said motherfucking Daniel Ricardo, And I want you to know that last night in the middle of the night, for anyone who is unfamiliar with my apartment, which you should be well aware of what's going on in my apartment. Um, I was going to say, do- you should be you should be unfamiliar. Anyone <laughs> listening to this, odds are I would hope that you're like unfamiliar. No. I would hope the majority of people are unfamiliar <laughs> with the layout of Nicole's apartment. Okay. Otherwise, we've been doing a really bad job of privacy. <laughs> Like, okay. otherwise, we're really failing the online <laughs> privacy. <laughs> no, okay, because I have the wall of hot people, oh, and I okay. have posted about this before. And as many of you may know, I do have a huge, like, t- 24 by 30 size poster of Daniel Ricardo on my wall. In the middle of the night, he came crashing down. No, it's a sign. And shattered. And I said, that is a sign. That's that a is sign a from sign. God. And I'm nervous. I'm so nervous to see. that. Wait, last night what's- this happened? Yeah. Mm, it's not Can open. you imagine if it happened on Japan I thought you night? were going to say that it, if it happened Saturday, that would have been absolutely, <laughs> that would have been too <laughs> scary. Like, I actually would have made you move out. would have been like, that actually, you have to leave. That's, actually, that's like, bad. that's not cool. That's not cool. We're not okay with that. <laughs> like, you actually have to leave. I'm scared. Mom, pick up. Anyway, my yeah, Danny, <laughs> Danny crashed into Alex, and then Alex, once again, caused... <sighs> So much damage to that it's, poor Williams car. And that was the new one. That was like the un unbroken one because that was his fresh car. Because they never even gave Logan his car back. They were like, Logan, you can have Alex's seconds. Like Alex crashed his car. So they gave him Logan's car. Mm-hmm. Last weekend. They like they let him keep Logan's car and gave Logan the repaired car. Which means that <laughs> He's now crashed both of the cars. I can't figure out how to make my hood so I don't look like <laughs> insane. I can, this is not the angle for me, but this is what we're getting today. You know what it you know what I feel like? I feel like you are in hospice care and I'm sitting next to your bedside. This is when they say like you can still talk to them. They can hear you. <laughs> 
like that's how I feel like you especially with the angle like it's angled down at you I know and, like I, I like, it's just like so much more comfortable like this but I feel like I look insane you just look like you're bedridden and that's okay <laughs> I should get a blanket <laughs> I need a little packet of jello a little tv tray yeah I need, I need some jello and like some get well soon flowers <laughs> thinking of you (laughs) all right speaking of thinking of you williams needs a thinking of you card because at this point they are facing a budget cap crisis four races into the season and you and you know what you know what? A couple episodes ago, we were talking big game. We were talking you a said big you game. Williams as your constructor for the they full did. year. <laughs> the full fucking year. You said, I'm putting all my eggs in the Williams basket. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to myself. And I'm so sorry for Williams. But you know what happens when you try things like that? Like <laughs> you have cursed Charles before. Like, I don't know what. I'm trying to be supportive and it's just not working out. They don't want your support. <laughs> okay, Keep noted. Keep your support away. Keep your support to yourself. <laughs> A couple of us in school, we were like, oh my God, Alex, like it's Alex's Red Bull seat to turn down. He he has it in the bag. Bro, at this point, you crashed your car two races in a row and you have caused so much damage to them. To poor James. James That's what I'm saying. is doing his job the best that he can. And Alex is giving him a headache. 1.5 yeah. million pounds in damage in the past two races from from Alex. That is insane. They're like, actually, we have no more money. So the next car you crash, it's coming out of your motherfucking paycheck. They're like, you're rebuilding it. It's, you're rebuilding it's, it. It's basically Gunther and Mick from two years ago where he was like, he caused seven million dollars in damage. Like, think of all the people I could pay with that money. It's just, you have to laugh. You have I don't think, to. I don't think anyone on the Williams team is laughing, but we certainly are. We, I mean, we have to. You have to laugh through the pain <laughs> is what I think it is. And my poor baby James, like, he's trying so hard, you know? He's doing And I think he's can. doing, he has the right idea, but mm-hmm. he really was not put in a winning position. No. And I think that that's where he's running into some issues is because it's like, the opposite of it ain't broke don't fix it it's like it's very broke you can't fix it if it ain't fixed still don't fix it i don't i don't know break it in half just break it (laughs) just to (laughs) nuke it yeah so japan was i think really the big winner of japan was hometown hero yuki Motherfucking Yuki Sonoda. Yuki. Yuki. Sonoda sluts rise up. Rise Sonoda up. Sluts rise the fuck let's up. Let's go. And Yuki got praise from the most unlikely of places to <laughs> Helmet motherfucking Marco. The Grim Reaper the, himself. The praise was insane. It was good too. It was like not even like Yuki did well. He literally said that he's on par with Max. I have the full quote, but like. TLDR, TLDR. He said he's on par with Max. And I personally think that that is humongous. So he said, <clears throat> I, was, I was thinking about making myself use like a Grim Reaper scary voice, but I thought the, the vibes over here are grim enough. I don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, he said, uh, Yuki got away sensationally well at the second start. His overtaking maneuvers were the show of the day. The fans mm-hmm. were completely over the moon. His weekend was on par with Max, Alonzo, and company. He was faultless, a super performance under the pressure of his home race. So my question is, will the real helmet, Marco, please stand up? <laughs> what have you done? We're, I think we're seeing – there's one, two possibilities of what we're seeing right now. Number okay, one, on me. Number one, we're seeing – an Avril Levine Melissa scenario. <laughs> Helmet has actually died, unsurprising, and, and they've replaced, they've replaced him. him with someone a little bit nicer. Yeah. Option two, someone has freaky Friday with Helmet Marco. <laughs> Namely, think- a Sonoda slut has body swapped with walking someone, himself. Someone took one for the team after 
our last episode, Yuki Defense Squad, they said, you know what? You're right. And we need to make changes around here. I'm going to Freaky changes. Friday with Helmet Marco. And, and I'm, I'm going to help make Helmet Yuki. say Yuki's the best and he should be on a, a better team. Or and third, real one. third we'll secret option. Third oh. secret option. Helmet Marco was visited by the three ghosts of Christmas past. The ghosts of a Grand Prix's past. <laughs> the gro- ghosts of Grand Prix's past. Grand Grampy's Grampy's <laughs> the ghost of Grampy's past. It's just a redneck <laughs> version of Elmer <Elmer-Margo. laughs> Margo. Grampy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three ghosts of Grand Prix's past, and he has been warned Changed. into changing his behavior or else. Or else. Or else. Or else. Or else. Um, or else Yos is going to come for him next. <laughs> okay, so everyone vote in the YouTube comments which option you think is most likely. <laughs> or, or if you have, if you a, have a secret theory, fourth option, but in the comments, lay it on us. us. We want to know. As Kate says, lay it on us. Lay. Because we're big into laying. It on us, yeah. <laughs> lay it on me. But yeah, I I know you didn't watch, but like, the overtakes that Yuki had were so impressive and it really made watching the highlights like worth it. You were like, fuck yeah, Yuki, like get after it. Um, I I genuinely was like, we all loved that. We all loved to see Yuki succeed. And I know he only got like 10th. So I only got like one point, but you know what? Who cares? That's one point for the sluts. That is. And another slut that I want to talk about. Tell me. The Chuck sluts. And I think as Chuck Sluts, we need to be real for a second. <laughs> be, be, be so for real. So, because I've been reading a lot. I've been reading a lot. That's dangerous. <laughs> Banned books only. <laughs> <laughs> the dangerous mind of a woman well read. <laughs> Anyways, I've been doing a lot of reading on the interwebs about my man Charles Leclerc and similarly to how the Ricard hose are going through, I was gonna say the two of us are really <laughs> we're having a revelation the Ricard hose are having a come to Jesus moment I think us truck sluts need to be a little bit for real for a minute because we have to be honest and say he's not doing as great as we all wanted him to he is being continuously showing up by Carlos, which, like, incredible for Carlos. I want him on the grid next year. Carlos is saying fuck you to literally everyone um, for giving his seat away. And I think that's great. But obviously, we all were like, Charles is the best. Charles is the best. He's our favorite driver. Still is. Still love him. But No, no competition. No competition. But- and, I mean, he's not doing badly. Like, he's still, like, coming in P4. Like, he's doing really well. Carlos, but- three podiums and three starts. Carlos is doing better and I just think you know in the spirit of all's fair in love and f1 if we're forcing Ricard host to take a long look in the mirror we cannot be the pot that calls the kettle black we also have to look in the mirror ourselves and be open to constructive criticism and being open to you know not putting someone on a podium pun intended that they don't deserve so all that to say obviously i would still literally give up my firstborn son for charles if he asked me to um rumble stiltskin scott style i will be saying that i understand that this year it doesn't look like he is world champion material and that he does need to improve and i think i saw an article while I was reading um, <laughs> that said that Charles was like, oh, damn, I got to start working on my qualifying pace, which I've never had to do before because it's always mm-hmm. my strong suit. So I'm just like, yeah, you're a professional athlete. You should be like practicing. You should be like working on things. So I hope he's getting in that sim and I hope he's like taking this to heart. I don't think he's someone that's going to like Lay take down it laying, easy. take it laying take down, it laying down. <laughs> um, so I think this will serve as like fuel to keep him going. Um, but I'm just, you know what? I'm just laying it out there. 
laying it out there. <laughs> um, I got it. I got it. <laughs> just to be fair, because I feel like we've been really hard on Danny lately, and I feel like it wasn't really fair for me. Charles has been getting a little bit away scot free. He has been, and I don't think that that's fair to you or to Danny or to. Uh, Charles Thank himself, so because it's not fair to Charles. Um, it's not fair to people to put them on a pedestal and not encourage them to continue growing mm-hmm. and evolving and bettering themselves. I so agree. I'm doing. I am honestly doing this to help. It's you an are, and that's so selfless of you. This is an intervention of which he is not a part of. So it's actually not doing anything to help him. Um, but maybe he'll listen to this because you never know who's. You never listening. know who's listening. <laughs> You never know. You never know. So for better or for worse, you never know who's listening. For better or for worse, you really do. You and you know what? I'll say this though: Charles is technically ahead of Carlos in the driver's standings at this point. He is because, because Carlos, Carlos has happened back to Yeah. So I mean, he has that going for him. He does. Um, so he can come back from this. He just has to work harder starting in China. Yeah. So Girls. we'll we'll see how that shakes out for for Charles. I. I'll I'll tell you this. I <laughs> think he needs to pull another um, Giada and say, respectfully, I need to spend time focusing on my career. If he would spend some time focusing on his career once without getting a new girlfriend. He should be realistic about that goal this time because he needs it. He does. He really does. But I'm really happy for, for Carlos. He's like... I saw yeah, a headline. He I saw a headline that was like Carlos is done sending like Ferrari yes. and Charles little messages. He's only sending facts now, and I was He's like, getting facts. I we was like, I out facts only. And it's just so it's fun to see because I know Carlos like has nothing to lose. He has nothing to lose, but also everything to lose, and so he's really putting it all out there. Mm-hmm. And he. My boss and I were talking about this today. We were like, Carlos is driving himself into a major contract. Like, there is no shot that he is not going to be at one of the top players next season. 100%. And I think it's more and more likely every day that that spot is at Red Bull. At Red Bull. Like, I think that they're like, okay, we need someone that's actually really going to take it to Max. And I think Carlos is the only one that's – only other person that's won a race other than – Red Bull in almost a full like year ca- calendar yeah. year like yeah that's insane which begs the question do we think Max is actually going to stick around at Red Bull or do we think he's potentially going to move no I think I'll stay at Red Bull you think so yeah well I also here's the thing about here's the thing about Max is that I don't think he cares enough mm-hmm. to and not like that he doesn't have like drive or ambition and like that he doesn't care but like he's already said he's like i don't really i've already won some world championships yeah. like i'm not going to be here forever like i'm not going to drive forever like i he just generally doesn't i don't think he cares in the way that alonzo and lewis yeah. care where they're going to switch teams to better their position i think max is like i'm in the best spot and I think that if Red Bull started not doing well, then maybe he'd be like, all right, I'm good now. I'm going to go yeah. do something else. Like, I don't think that he necessarily has the the goal of staying in F1 for yeah. ever. So I think that he – I think he's there. Yeah, well, we we're. I was chatting today and we were saying, well, look at what happened when Seb left Red Bull. He didn't win another world championship. Look at what happened to Danny when he left Red Bull had an awful track record so it's like max do you want to play the game do you want to play the game and say okay if i leave and i win like another world championship at a different team then that kind of proves to everyone that i am the best driver and it's not necessarily the car right right he has that to prove or alternatively he can say all right well i'll just stay at red bull and win as many championships as i can right and go for the record of you know five in a row or whatever it is um yeah and just go out in a blaze of glory um yeah it's kind of like okay which part of his ego is really going to be fed there which is which is kind of what i'm saying is that i don't necessarily know if max has that ego yeah like i don't know if he cares about going out in a blaze of glory i don't know if he cares about 
the glory aspect of Which it. Which hopefully he's a, it's a little lighter for him now that Yos is noticeably absent. Yeah. From all of the paddocks. It's, you know, Max kind of gives me Kimmy energy. And he's <laughs> like, Kimmy's just like, this is just a hobby for me. Like, I feel like that's kind of Max. Yeah. And like, I just feel like it's, he's just does it because he enjoys doing it. And, but he's like, well, I don't need to be here forever. I've already won a championship. So I've already like done what I set out to do. So now I'm just here because I'm probably getting paid a yeah. fuckload of money. And yeah. it's fun and I'm good at it. Yeah. And I think that's great. I mean, he's he put out a quote that was like, I mean, I don't really care who becomes my teammate because they're still going to have to go up against me. And I'm like, so true, bestie. Absolutely. You're so real for that. Oh, real. Yeah. I think I think Max is our next like Kimmy. Yeah. Everyone's like, Max is such an asshole. Max is so dry. And I'm like, no, Max is Dutch. It's, it's he's the just same thing of, as Kimmy. Yeah. So anyways. All right. Well, that's do we have anything else for Japan? I'm done. No. I'm done with it. Drops mic. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. All right. Before we move on to bigger F1 news of the week, let's get into our standings. Let's do it. So, okay, again, I'm, I'm going to say you're welcome, everyone. I did research this week, <laughs> so it's not going to take that long. All right. So, Max got 26. Okay. Perez, 18. Mm-hmm. Carlos, 15. Mm, hold on. Am I s- stupid? There we go. 15? Yep. Okay. Charles, 12. Mm-hmm. Lando, 10. Mm-hmm. Alonzo, 8. Mm-hmm. George, 6. Okay. Oscar, four. Mm-hmm. Lewis, two. Okay. And Yuki, one. Perfect. Incredible. Um, non-team fits. Mm-hmm. We've got Danny. Yep. Lewis. Yep. Yuki. Yep. Alonzo. Yep. Lance. Yep. Carlos. Yep. George. Mm hmm. And Oscar. Okay, all tied up. Um, for Wags, we have both Lilies have- were there. So Oscar and mm-hmm. Alex. Mm hmm. Max. And did we say that we're giving this to Alonzo? We haven't. Okay. Well, she was there. I also, like, don't know if she's at every single one, but she was on the WAGS pages this week. So I'll okay. give it to you if you want. Okay. Um, I didn't see any workout thirst traps. Um, what, Was Rebecca there? No. No, she wasn't. Not a lot. Not many were there this week. No. Did anyone wear their own merch? Only Lando and Pierre. Surprisingly, Danny did not. Negative one. Negative one. We had four special helmets. We had lots of special helmets. Yeah, we had four of them. I know Yuki. Yep. Lando. Mm Mm-hmm. Who else? Charles and Alonso. Because Charles did the Jules Bianchi Mm. helmet. That was really sweet. And then we had no post about F1 Academy and, and no one else. Switches. So that's all she wrote for Wolf Track. Perfect. What are, those, what are the results there? Oh, sorry. Um, you have 79 overall and I have 54. <laughs> let's go, team. So let's see. Ooh, okay. Total combined, you have 271. I have 270. Oh, shit. So, damn, you're going to smoke me combined just because you're going to keep crushing the on track. Well, I don't know. You've, you're you up 23 points on – 24 points on me on the off track. True. So, we'll see. We'll see. 
Standings are good. It's close. It's it's real close, fam. Move on to the next conversation topic. Beautiful jingle. Thank you. There you are rumors. That. You can cut that out and use that every time we don't have a good uh, transition. Segway. Yeah. Rumor on the street. The streets are saying. What are the streets saying? That Alpine and parent company Renault are looking to sell. Unsurprising. Based, based on how this year has gone. Um, but Unsurprising. word on the street is also that they would require if they sold that they would still have to use Renault engines, which I was like, what's kind of the point? Like very clearly that's, that's kind of the, the problem. Issue. Like that's, that's kind the of the issue. We're going to fix um, the problem, but we're actually going to keep the problem while we fix it. <laughs> They're like, we actually are um, going to rebuild this house, but we're not going to redo the crumbling foundation. Ex- literally. <laughs> so good luck. Oh, my um, goodness. Fire sale as rapid as it can. Um, but I just thought that that was like such an interesting rumor. And especially that Rena was like, yeah, we'll sell. But like, you still have to use our engines. No, thank you. Like, no, that's. But you know what? Andretti would still probably be like, I'll buy. (laughs) 100%. He's like, I'll do anything. I will do anything. anything, Honestly, speaking of Rumpelstiltskin, Andretti is trying to. Andretti is going every single freaking bridge in the world looking for a little troll man (laughs) underneath that they can sell their firstborn to to get into F1. Because they said, F1 obviously said, no, 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 you shall not pass. You will not get into the sport. Um, and Andretti said, I that sign doesn't pertain to me because I can't read <laughs> in true American fashion. And like, they <laughs> they basically were like, OK, we hear you. But like, don't worry, you'll still be hearing from us. Um, <laughs> So they just opened you. I hear you. I'm not comprehending, but I hear you. I hear you. I respect your opinion, but I shan't be following it. Um, So they just opened up a new factory in Silverstone, which, if you know, obviously that's where Mercedes is. That's, you know, McLaren is nearby. Red Bull is nearby. Like, that's kind of like the epicenter of some of the major players in Formula One. I think Haas has some sort of factory around there. I think so too. So a lot of key players there. And then also they were like, hey, by the way, we will be having entries into F3 and F2 as well so that we can get a driver into F1. Um, That's all they want. They're like, we're not asking for the moon here. No. So and you know what? And this is the thing. Like. F1 has to be at its like most profitable right now. Like there has yeah. to be so much fucking money in this sport. And it's kind of sick to me that they just like won't let someone else in because that means that they're going to decrease by like a couple million dollars. A drop like I'm like, okay, should we unionize against the other F1 team so that Andretti can get a spot at the table? Like I'm sick. So this is a classic schoolyard bullying. It is. You, they're saying you can't sit with us. I was getting hit by a bus. Andretti, Andretti said, that's fine, but you'll rue the day. You'll and rue the day. I look forward to that day, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I look you forward too. to seeing the day that Andretti comes out on top and they get what they want and they get what they deserve. 100%. So just keep your eyes peeled for an Andretti kind of. They're, they're weaseling their way in. You eyes ain't out. seen the last of them. Eyes up. Eyes to the sky, baby. <laughs> That's Andretti's. Ed that's Andretti's. A swivel. <laughs> they said you ain't seen the last. Keep an eye out for Selena. Um, in other big F one news this week, I saw that there are brand new tracks being planned for both China and South Korea. Ooh. So uh, we've got some some movement over there, which hopefully will. I mean. You know, they add South Korea. They're not taking anything away. We're going to have 37 races um, pretty soon. Every weekend, actually, 52 52 races a year. 52 races in a year. The drivers are like, you pay me not enough money. And now I have to do a race every single week. And Andretti's just like, I'll take your spot. I'll do whatever. I'll do anything. And I'm (laughs) over here like, listen, I work too much and I don't get paid anything. I would love to work once a week. (laughs) <laughs> you're in the sim every other day yeah well it's okay speaking of that i saw something tell me <laughs> it's not, i'm gonna tell you right now 
So it doesn't have to do with F1, but it's similar okay. vibes to new F1 tracks being built. Is I saw that I think it's I think it's Dubai is building a full you know how they have like the full island that's like F1. Yes. Like what is it? Yas Marina? No. I don't know what I'm thinking of. But one of those one of the Middle Eastern races is literally it's an island and it's just for like the F1 track. Well, they're making an island for like esports. Mm. A full island for it. Okay. And I just love the concept of this. <laughs> that they're like, I love this thing so much. I'm going to make a full island dedicated to it. So people will come to this island to play esports. And I am just like, what's next? Like, what is the next island we're going to get? These are the people that are going to make like that Scooby Doo island from the, the live action <laughs> Scooby Doo movie. Yeah. Was it like Skulls, uh, Spooky Island? They're going to make Spooky Island. They're going to make fucking Skull Island. They're just going to be making islands for things. And I'm just like, that's so fun. I want to make an island for like some fun thing that I love. Okay, they so what would your what they're... would your island be then? What would my island be? Painting island. Paint by number island. The whole island is paint by number. So you just go there and you just you paint every surface you see. So fun. Uh, I would do – I would also do – you could do karaoke island. <laughs> karaoke whole island, island dedicated to karaoke how fun so so do you think this is also a place where you hone your craft like are you getting sent to the island to like be good is it like lord of the flies like they just put a bunch of boys on this island and do esports and like just see who comes out on top like survivor island like what kind of island um well i want to back up a little bit for a second because they did not <laughs> put those boys on that island in Lord of the Flies. Like, I don't think that was a situation where they put them like, there. Put them there wasn't some social experiment. experiment. Like, they ate someone because they were physically unable to get off. Like, this was not like they didn't. Anyways. No. <laughs> they killed Piggy for fun. Yeah. And, and they then ate they him. ate him. But they killed him for fun. Not yes. They were. It was like two days. Okay. They, I know. But I'm was, saying like, they didn't like put them there like i don't think a murder I, would have happened if they were able to like leave i like know, i think someone would have stepped in is it like <laughs> I the get it. Are just gonna put these guys on the island not how that worked <laughs> but i don't know i think it's more of like a vacation like i think it's like spooky island vibes like i think you're like you I'm... just go and you play video games yeah it's like island? it's like f1 arcade but an island that's insane behavior literally so i'm just kind of like shock and awe is all like shock and awe is the only way to put it like <laughs> insane there it's just like i would love to be again going back to a conversation from a couple weeks ago it must be nice to just be so rich to be like i love sim racing do you want to know what i'm gonna do build an island because yeah what was does it does anyone want to invest know, in our um, island it's, yeah it's yes marina right where the rock was no it's jason momoa jason momoa that was for yas marina right yeah yeah, that's literally because it's an island dedicated to. Okay, Abu Dhabi to build world's first esport island, costing two hundred eighty million dollars. Hey, Abu Dhabi is on a mission to place. attract some of the world's best and also emphasize homegrown talent amongst the gaming industry. The Middle East is adding an esports island to its long list of impressive investments, according to BCG. More than sixty percent of the population in the region are gamers resulting in the Middle East having one of the highest gaming mobile app downloads in the world. Okay, um, what are they all playing? Candy Crush? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Let's see. Set to be located between Al Bandor and Al Dana, developments along Al Raha Beach, the island is projected to hit 1 billion USD at the time of completion. It's expected to include a luxury hotel, high-tech venues for global and regional tournaments, professional training facilities, and even content creation spaces. That's so Black Mirror, dude. That's like so. Like, like, Abu Dhabi just seems like such a. It's a fake place. Magical place. Oh, where okay. dreams come <laughs> true. You can love something and get an island. But, like it feels like a video game. Like Abu Dhabi itself feels like a video game. It's the it's metaverse. Like, Abu Dhabi is the metaverse. It's like you, can, if you have enough money, you too can buy an island. 
The boot camp itself is expected to be equipped with state of the art gaming PCs, as well as analytical tools and even isolated rest areas for sleep or downtime. Gamers will also have access to a balanced nutrition program. <laughs> They're like, we're not letting these kids get fat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Abu Dhabi. We All of the resort rooms will have gaming computers. The quote is True Gamers conducted a comprehensive market analysis of the MENA region's esports landscape and the global esports industry growth trajectory before developing plans for the esport island. This in depth analysis gives us confidence that the proposed business model will be instrumental in bringing esports island to life. So crazy. So we we will be seeing Lando and Max live on that island soon. They will be moving from Monaco to Eastport Island. Hundred percent. All right. What's next? Um. Let's get into. I think we need to do a quick follow up on Charles Leclerc's ice cream because yeah, we officially we got an official like promo video. Yeah, we did, and it was so freaking cute. It was. I love him. I love I know I was being harsh earlier, but like <laughs> cutie. I love him so much. Like he just, you know what, he just loves ice cream. And I just think that is so wholesome and cute. And like the video is adorable. The flavors are cute. Shouts out to Charles for having a pistachio flavored ice cream. And you know what? We talked Which about a couple of weeks ago and we were like, do we think Charles is going to have fun names? Do we think it's going to be boring? And I think I hit the nail on the head when I said I think they're going to be kind of like, I was like, he's not like, I know he wants to be kind of fun and like dad jokey, but I also think he's kind of boring. And I think it was a perfect combination. It was of those two. Like, I will say I, <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the name yes. list. I was like, yeah. okay, he it's clearly, oh, yep. <laughs> Vanilla love. Caramel. Yeah. I was it's like, a okay. classic multi extra letter. He's got like Charles. choco, choco chunk crunch something something along those lines so i was like fun. okay it's not so boring but it does it has a little pizzazz and i think that perfectly encapsulate encapsulates charles 100 percent. it's just like you got a little sprinkling of yeah of a little sass. bit of fun a little bit of fun so i personally can't wait to be trying um, i mean do we think th- it didn't say where it was going to be sold but like do we think it's gonna be international probably not right I got to believe that we can reach out to someone about getting a couple pints. Like I got, I got to believe if anyone is listening, if you you're wanna, listening and you can get us a lick a lick pints, like, please, like, please, I Rumpelstiltskin, you can have my firstborn. <laughs> I'll do anything. Which I went to go see the eclipse on Monday and we had ended up driving all the way up to Waterbury, Vermont. I know, which, I was dreaming. In case you, in case you didn't know, that's where Ben and Jerry's headquarters is. Yeah, of course it is. Did you go? So we tried to. We tried to go after the eclipse. They're like, yeah, you guys went to DQ because because we tried to go to Ben and Jerry's. They're like, lots full. We're not letting anyone else in today. Lots full. So we were like, cool. So we will have to go back because we were like, well, we should go to the graveyard. They we we're like, they have to be doing a fun eclipse flavor, and we we never found out if they were because Ugh. we were denied entry denied entry after we just we literally had a whole podcast episode about ben and jerry's flavors um i was denied entry to the ben and jerry's graveyard so i think of that i guess we'll never know we'll never know what that flavor of ice cream was (laughs) no we'll go this summer we'll take a pilgrimage okay good it's been it's been years since i've been to ben and jerry's factory i've never been and so i was like so excited it's literally magical it's so much fun i love it there when i was in fourth grade i went and i got a pair of slippers that were cows and i swear to you i had those slippers into my first apartment in boston (laughs) i wore them because my feet stopped growing in fourth grade I had massive clompers and they were my favorite slippers that I've ever owned in my entire life. And I still mourn them. <laughs> okay. Well, we got to go back and get you a new pair. I swear. Truly, if they have them, I think I'll cry of happiness. Like I loved them so much because they weren't like, you know, you know, nowadays people make animal slippers, but it's like a full like booty. It's mm-hmm. like the full thing is the animal. These were just like slip ons and the front was like cows. And they were so cute and they were so comfortable and I just loved them. And I just feel like they're not making them like that anymore. (laughs) No one's making them like that. No one's making it. I mean, no one's making it like Ben and Jerry's ever. 
Period. 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 Exactly. Charles, step it up. If you want, if yeah. you want to be Sorry, taken Charles, you're seriously, already, you're already not doing it. <laughs> you want to be taken seriously in this industry? Step up. Step okay? up to the streets. Speaking of someone who's stepping up to the streets, tell me, Sebastian Vettel. Ooh, the streets are saying the rumors are swirling. Um, the grapevine is, is chit chatting away. Is he poised for a little bit of a return to the F1 grid? Now we've he's heard teasing it too. He is teasing it. We've we've heard from Seb himself that he's not, you know, counting himself out forever. But it was definitely time for him to take a break. And there has been some chatter. Obviously, we know there's an open Mercedes seat. A lot of conversation around who's going. And Toto has made kind of a comment about this. He was recently asked in Suzuka, and he said Sebastian is someone you can never discount. His track record is phenomenal, and sometimes maybe taking a break is also good to evaluate what's important to you and refine your motivation. We know that to be true. He further emphasized that we haven't taken the decision yet, and it's not something we plan to do in the next few weeks. The driver market is very dynamic, and some of the really good guys are about to sign for the other teams, and we want to continue to have these discussions. So no real updates on that but it's interesting to hear that sebastian is not a non-option he said don't count me out he said surprise bitch bet you bet thought you'd seen the last of me. me and you know what i i, mean, I never said that i never said that i thought that. i would never see sebastian battle again because all it'll be a bad time in my life if i never see sebastian battle again amen sis but I'm curious when over under on when you think silly season is going to start kicking off. Do you think it's going to be in the summer? Or do we think it's going to be sooner? Honestly, I think it's going to be kind of late this year. You think so? I think I don't know. It's like I think teams are going to want to hold out as long as they can to get the best people. Yeah. And I think the drivers too. Like there's so much up in the air for like these seats that I think everyone's going to kind of wait to the last minute to make sure that they get the best possible. Yeah opportunity i think I don't we're know. gonna get I think I, but i do get... think it's gonna be like rapid dominoes like it's gonna be like once one person announces we're gonna get them all because people are gonna like i think it's like we just have to wait for the first person because once they do it everyone's gonna be like okay shit now i have to do this before everything is gone it's like hurry up and wait like everyone is like on pot like holding just like waiting for the first person to make the move and then i think go. we're gonna have at least one announcement by the end of the Montreal weekend. Oh, okay. I like That's that. That's what my prediction is. I like that. At least one. So we'll see. Love it. All right. Time for our favorite segment. F1 Academy. I have some fun things to talk about today. I know. I was looking. I'm so excited to hear more. Okay. So there's been some discussions comparing Max and Lewis and their opinions on F1 Academy. Also, absolutely so brutal that this one article i was looking at called them ex rivals like okay don't be rude to lewis like so that's so tough. tough that's like so tough that they're like not rivals they're ex rivals that's how bad Mercedes unfortunately became. it's the truth super super tough also they gave some very interesting backstory on something that this was the first sentence of this article so imagine how jarring this was for me to open up an article and to read the only helmet that a woman should use is in the hairdresser first of all that doesn't even make any sense well yeah because the they, helmets yeah the perm helmets okay like, i was like, like sick burn doesn't make any sense but this was just said, not for our time yeah this was said by the then f1 race director to the first woman to race in f1 maria Teresa de Filippis. so that's how this article started out and i said it's off to a rocky start but they start, They talked about Lewis and Max's differing uh, statements that they've made on F1 Academy. So Lewis has been said has been quoted to say, "Quote: Really happy to hear the progress F1 Academy's made. It's been great having Susie there, who is a phenomenal driver. So has a perspective from the driver side, but also she's been a team owner. She's really fighting for that inclusivity. So I think it's really great the steps we're taking. Really happy to hear that all of the formula." all of formula one is on board so he's also you know been to the races posted on instagram about the series like he's a huge supporter of of the series he was there mm -hmm. last year when they crowned their first champion all of that and then a lot of people have seen max's comments this week 
where he said, quote, it is good that Formula One now pays extra attention to women in motorsport with F1 Academy, although I have questions about how they approach it. The cars they drive are way too slow. If you ever want to get them into F1, it really has to go to a higher level. It's all very nice having girls sponsored by F1 teams, but what are we actually helping them with? There is no next step for them now. Yeah. And, I, and a lot of people are like, okay, Max ma- – make some great points. And I think, you know, some of that is very valid that like the cars are a lot slower than F1. But I also think he was wrong in saying that there is no next step. And I don't think anyone is saying that F1 Academy is apples to apples with F1. Like no one is saying like, oh, the winner of F1 Academy is going to be in F1 next year. Like that's never been the plan. And so I think like to say it, that way is just kind of like discrediting the work that F1 Academy is doing. So to give more backstory to F1 Academy, because I like wanted to go into research and make sure like I fully understood what it is yeah. doing. So F1 Academy, the category is designed to give drivers access to more track time, racing and testing, as well as support with the technical, physical and mental preparations. Uh, It will provide young talent in junior categories with access to the fundamental level of experience needed to progress to Formula 3 and join the road to F1. So it was never saying that – so basically what Max was saying was was that F1 Academy needed to act more like an F4 feeder series, and it is. So Mm -hmm. it actually is doing exactly what – he thinks it should do. I just don't know if he's been one of the drivers that has paid enough attention to like what it actually is. And he might just have been like blindsided by a question about it without fully being educated on what it is. The 2023 winner, it was Maria Gracia. And as a part of a milestone agreement between F1 Academy and the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine, Maria received a fully funded seat for the 2024 season with Prima Racing. Right. And the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine is an FIA certified regional European Formula 3 racing series that's intended to be a stepping stone between Formula 1 and the international FIA Formula 3. So basically what's happening here is that Maria was in F1 Academy mm-hmm. and now she's going to this next series that is intended to be a stepping stone to the FIA Formula 3. So it is really doing something good. And she got a fully funded seat there. So I think it is really doing the work that people want it to see. It's just not all at once, which is where I think people get kind of caught up. And you and I have this (coughs) progress over perfection. But you know what? I I think that with Max's comments, it's not so much that he's like disregarding it. Right. He just wants, he's like, listen, I want it to be better. And I hear that. Right. And the reason why I know that it's not really coming from a malicious point of view with Max is that he has regular, like him and his sister used to race yeah. together at when they were younger. Yep. And he has come out and said, he was like, listen, my sister had the same amount of talent as I did. I just, and he's like, and I know my dad would have put a hundred percent as much behind her as he did with me, but she just simply didn't want it as much as I did. And she didn't want to work as hard as I, as I did. And he's like, that's fine, but I'm not counting like discounting her. Right. And so that's why I'm like, I know that Max is probably like, well, why, why are we making it easier for them? Why aren't we just like kind of putting them in an F3 car instead? Yeah. Right. Like, and, and I think he's just disregarding that, like, they're probably not funding. There's not enough funding for that. There's not enough like, yeah. Um, you know, I think the way Max is thinking about, about it, it is enough. very similar to how a lot of fans think about it. Yeah, exactly. Without understanding like all of the work that has to happen and like what needs to like things can't just happen overnight. Right. And I think that that is is the difficult part. But I don't. I don't think that Max said anything negative. Or no, anything totally. That's like yeah. Bad, right. Right. Like I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think that, like, I think the headline of that article, like, Max versus Lewis was very misleading. Like, I think, I think basically what they were just looking was, like, the two different types of comments. One that's, like, full of praise and one that's, like, asking the right questions. So, very interesting and, I don't know, just super interesting. But I think it's nice, it's a nice reminder to, like, read those comments and then say, like, oh, actually doing more research, like, let's, yeah, let's Formula One, F1 Academy is doing kind of what we need them to do which is nice 
And something that is not, that's something that was in the news this week that is not related to F1 Academy, but it is related to women in motorsport um, that I was super excited about was that we are seeing an ELF sponsorship on an IndyCar, Indy 500. I know. So obviously Charlotte Tilbury is sponsoring an F1 Academy car. But now Elf has gotten into the game as well and is sponsoring uh, one of the drivers for one of the female drivers for IndyCar. So Dale, incredible Dale Coney racing um, with RWR announced Catherine Leggy will drive its number 51 Honda Delara with primary sponsorship from Elf Cosmetics. The company is expanding its partnership with Leggy becoming the, I think that's how you say her name, L-E-G-G-E, Leggy. Um, Becoming the first ever beauty brand to serve as a primary sponsor for an entry in the Indianapolis 500. Like, so cool. So fun. Um, She's quoted as saying, I'm honored to be back at the 500 to represent such a groundbreaking and historic effort put forward by ELF. ELF is truly changing the face of motorsports by lifting women up and challenging norms. Janet Guthrie set the stage for this type of moment back in the 70s, and I'm honored to carry it forward with Dale Coney Racing with RWR this year. When I was nine years old, I decided I wanted to be a race car driver, and I never would have dreamed a beauty brand would be one day be my primary sponsor in the Indy 500. So it's so cool. I think it's so fun. And again, we've had this conversation before, like, oh, it's a beauty brand and they're sponsoring women, like so groundbreaking. But again, I just don't care. I love it. I I, I don't care. I love it. It's money. And Someone has to be the leader to pave the way, Mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, just like we said with F1 Academy, it's not going to happen overnight. And unfortunately, the boys club is the boys club. Yeah. And women are going to have to support each other until the men step in. And that's always been the case. And I think that we should just be proud and happy to see that there is movement in the space. And I'm excited to see like... It's just, it, it is challenging the norms. And I think it's putting it front yeah. and center on a very large stage. And I I know that this is similar to what you said with the announcements, like the dominoes are going to start falling and there is going to be more mm-hmm. and more sponsorships and people trying to get in front of women's sports. Uh, we yep. saw the largest viewing of the NCAA championship female finals. And I know like the WNBA recently divorced like its rights with the NBA because they were like, you guys are scamming us out of money. We know we can get more media rights. And so it's, it's a really exciting time for women in sports. And if God forbid, it has to be the beauty companies who are kind of paving the way, then so be it. Absolutely. I love it. Preach. Let's go. And on that note. On that note. On that very positive note, I'm feeling very inspired. I am too. How fun. I think it's uh, time we wrap this episode up. Let's do it. Thank you guys all for listening and hanging out with us. Laying down with us if you were. Hopefully maybe you you listen to this laying down since we're re- I recorded it laying down. I hope you, everyone has a wonderful day, night, afternoon, weekend. Morning. Week morning month i hope everyone's month is going better than my month (laughs) (laughs) um and we will be back with a new episode next next week week. but until then we'll see you on the internet internet. Bye. bye